Music is traditionally written on a staff. A staff consists of five lines and four spaces, which represent the different notes on the musical scale. The notes represented on the staff come from our musical alphabet. They are A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. After the G note, the alphabet starts over with A. This also works in reverse. If you are playing or writing the notes backwards, G, F, E, D, C, B, A, G, F, and so on. The lines on the guitar staff represent the notes E, G, B, D, and F. You can easily commit this to memory by using the phrase, every good boy does fine. The spaces on the guitar staff represent the notes F, A, C, and E. The word face can be used to memorize these notes. Notes can extend above and below the staff by the use of ledger lines. There are also different versions of most notes, called accidentals. Accidentals consist of sharps and flats. To make a note sharp is to raise it one fret on the guitar. To make a note flat is to lower it one fret on the guitar. One way of writing sharps or flats on the staff is to place the symbol before the note you want to change. Another way of writing sharps or flats is to use a key signature. Simply put, a key signature is a group of sharps or flats at the very beginning of a staff line. The sharp or flat note in the key signature indicates that all notes of the same name will be altered throughout the piece of music. For example, if the key signature has a sharp symbol on an F, you are to play F sharp in place of F for the remainder of the piece of music unless otherwise indicated by another accidental symbol. When a sharp or flat note needs to be changed back to its original non-accidental state, a natural symbol is used. Each measure uses an equal set of beats. The amount of beats is determined by the time signature. For example, in 4-4 four, four timing, each measure equals 4 beats. In 3-4 timing, each measure will equal 3 beats. In 2-4 timing, each measure will equal 2 beats. The most popular time signature is 4-4 four, four timing. 4-4 four, four timing is also called common time and is sometimes identified with a letter C in the time signature. Another way to identify 4-4 four, four timing or common time is to leave the time signature blank. The tempo of a song determines how fast or how slow each measure is counted. For example, 40 BPM One, means you would count 40 two. beats per minute. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Eighty BPM means you would count one, eighty beats two, per minute. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One hundred and sixty BPM means you would count 160 beats per minute. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. One, two, three, four. There are many different timing notes. For starters, the whole note equals four beats, or one whole measure in 4-4 four, four timing. The half note equals two beats. The quarter note equals one beat. These notes and timings will be explained more thoroughly as they are used throughout this video. The musical alphabet consists of 12 notes, A, A sharp and B flat, B, C, C sharp, D flat, D, D sharp and E flat, E, F, F sharp and G flat, G, G sharp and A flat, and A again. Notice that the 2nd, 5th, 7th, 10th, and 12th notes have two different names. For example, the 2nd note can be an A sharp or B flat. It is the same note, but it has two different names. 
the notes A, B, C, D, E, F, and G are called basic or natural notes. The notes A sharp and B flat, C sharp and D flat, D sharp and E flat, F sharp and G flat, and G sharp and A flat are called accidentals. Accidental notes will be used later on in this study course. Each of the six strings of the guitar have been assigned a specific note. The sixth string, which is the top and heaviest string, is an E note. It's called the low E string. When this string is played open with no frets, it will produce an E pitch. Each fret after that will bring you to the next note in the musical alphabet. So for example, if you play the first fret on the sixth string, it will produce an F note. The second fret will produce an F sharp or G flat note. The third fret will produce a G note. Next, a G sharp A flat note. Then an A note. The sixth fret will produce an A sharp or B flat note. Seventh fret is B. Eighth fret is C and so on. Once you reach the 12th fret, the musical alphabet will repeat itself starting at the E note. The 5th string open is an A note. The 4th string is a D note. The 3rd string is a G. The 2nd string is B. And the 1st string is the high E string. Altogether, starting with the 6th string, the open notes are E, A, D, G, B, and E. Here is a fretboard note chart provided for your reference. Some notes have been highlighted and are connected by a line. The notes that share the same color highlight share the same pitch and will aid you in tuning your guitar. For example, if your low E string is in tune already, you can use the A note on the 5th fret, 6th string, to tune the open A string. Simply play the 5th fret of the low E string, then play the open A string, and compare the two notes. If needed, adjust the pitch of your 5th string to match that of the 6th string by tightening or loosening the tuning pad for the 5th string. You can apply this to the 5th fret of the 5th string to tune the 4th string open to a D note. Then the 5th fret of the 4th string to tune the 3rd string to a G note. You can use the 4th fret of the 3rd string to tune the 2nd string to a B note. And finally, the 5th fret of the 2nd string to tune the 1st string to an E note. If you're having a hard time tuning your guitar by ear, I recommend an electric tuner. Electric tuners are inexpensive and will save you from the frustration that comes with playing a guitar that is out of tune. The tuner that I'm using in this video is a Boss TU-80. It has a microphone that picks up the pitch of acoustic instruments or a plug for electric instruments. To tune your instrument, pick an open string. If the display lights up to the left of center, that means your string is too loose and you need to tighten the tuning peg. If the display lights up to the right, it means your string is too tight and you need to loosen the tuning peg. Music is the combination of time and sound. By changing the speed at which a note or group of notes is played, or the length the note is held, you are controlling the timing. By playing a melody, harmony, or chords, you are controlling the sound. Melody is when individual notes are played, one after the other. The melody on the screen is made of the notes C, D, E, and F. The C note is found on the 5th string, 3rd fret of the guitar. The D note is on the 4th string open. E is on the 4th string, 2nd fret. And F is on the 4th string, 3rd fret.
The note value for each note is a whole note. A whole note is played and held for a duration of four beats. Our tempo will determine how fast or how slow we will count each beat. For example, let's play this melody at a tempo of 60 beats per minute or 60 BPM. Now let's play the melody at 120 BPM. Next, let's add to our melody so we are playing C, D, E, and F and adding G, A, B, and C. The G note is on the third string open, A is on the third string second fret, B is the second string open, and the higher octave C note is on the second string first fret. Altogether, these notes make up the C major scale. Here is the same melody, but we are changing the note value to two half notes instead of one whole note. A whole note equals four beats, so a half note equals two beats. For this melody, we are playing C on the one count and letting it ring out for the two count. Play another C for the three count and let it ring out for the four count. Then we change to D in the second measure, playing on the one count, hold for two, repeat D on three, hold for four. In measure three, we change to the E note with the same rhythm. One, two, three, four, to F, two, three, four. Let's apply the whole song to a tempo. This exercise has us playing our melody descending, starting with the higher octave C note, then B, A, G, F, E, D, and C. The note value is a quarter note. A whole note receives four beats, a half note receives two beats, and a quarter note receives one beat. Starting on the high octave C note, we will play a note for each beat. One, two, three, 
four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Before moving on, I would like to inform you that there are ear training and sight reading exercises located in the bonus section of this video. These exercises will help strengthen your musical ear and test your ability to read sheet music. The first exercise uses a scale that we just learned. It's an optional exercise, so it's entirely up to you if you would like to complete it now and return to this section of the video later. In addition to having a name for each note, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, we also have a numeric value called the interval. Starting with C as our number one or first interval, D is the second interval, E is the third interval, F is the fourth, G is the fifth, A is the sixth, and B is our seventh interval. The higher C note is the eighth or first interval. This is the octave C note. It is exactly double the pitch or frequency of the starting C note. The octave is where the musical alphabet and interval numbers will start over again. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. This next exercise has us playing a melody from C, our root or first interval, through all of the other intervals in the C major scale. In the first measure, we play a second interval, C to D open on the fourth string, then back to C. In the second measure, we play a third interval, C to E and back to C. Next is a fourth interval, C, F, C. The fifth interval is C to G open on the third string and back to C. The sixth interval, C, A, C. Seventh interval is C to B open on the second string, back to C. And the octave interval, C to C, back to the low C. The note value gives us an interesting rhythm for each measure by combining a quarter note, quarter note, and half note. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Here it is with the tempo. As we learn more guitar theory, it will be important for us to play the C scale in different positions called scale inversions. These inversions share the same notes, but each gives us a different fingering position. 
We have already learned one inversion, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Let's move on to the second inversion that lets us play the same exact notes in a different position. Where before we only played one note on the starting string, here we are going to play two notes on the fifth string. Starting with the C note on the third fret, played with your middle or second finger. Next, stretch to the D note on the fifth fret, played with your pinky or fourth finger. Now we move to the fourth string notes, playing E on the second fret with your index finger or your first finger. F on the third fret with your middle finger, followed by G on the fifth fret, played with your pinky. Next we play three notes on the third string to finish up the scale, starting with A on the second fret, B on the fourth fret, and N on C, our root note. All together, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Our final inversion allows us to play three notes on our starting string. So on the fifth string, starting with our root note C, this time we'll play it with our index finger. Now stretch your middle finger up to the D note on the fifth fret. Then stretch your pinky up to the E note on the seventh fret. The next string uses the same exact fingering. So on the fourth string we play the F on the third fret, G on the fifth, a on the seventh fret. To finish up on the third string notes, we play B on the fourth fret, then end on C, the root note, with your second finger on the fifth fret. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Now let's play all three inversions with the tempo. There are also scale extensions that you may want to learn. Starting with the C note on the second string, first fret, D on the third fret, E on the fifth fret. Next, move to the first string notes, F on the first fret, G on the third fret, A on the fifth fret, B on the seventh fret, and C on the eighth fret. This scale extension works well with our first inversion of the C scale. Our next extended scale starts on the third string, fifth fret C note. On the second string, we play the D on the third fret, E fifth fret, F on the sixth fret, the first string notes are G on the 3rd fret, A on the 5th fret, B on the 7th, and C on the 8th. This scale position works well with our second scale inversion. For the next extension, we'll play C on the 3rd string 5th fret and D on the 3rd string 7th fret. On the 2nd string, we'll play E on the 5th fret, F on the 6th fret, G on the 8th. And on the 1st string, A on the 5th fret, B 7th, and C 8th fret. This extension fits right in with our third scale inversion.
For our first exercise, let's play all three extensions with a tempo. Now let's combine each lower inversion with its appropriate scale extension. If you would like to spend some time exploring other locations of duplicate and extended notes on the guitar neck, please visit the bonus stills section of this video and view the fretboard note chart. This will give you an overall visual of how musical notes repeat themselves on the fretboard. You can apply intervals to each note in a scale. For example, we know that C to D is a second interval. If we play from D to the next scale note, which is E, we also have a second interval. Next is E to F, which is the next scale note, but it's one fret distance instead of two, like C to D and D to E. A one fret distance on the guitar is called a half step. A half step is called a flat second interval. A two fret distance on the guitar is called a whole step, which we
we have learned is a second interval. So from the top, we have C to D, which is a second interval, D to E, which is a second, E to F, a flat second, F to G is a second interval, G to A is a second interval, A to B is a second, B to C is a flat second. If we want to play a second interval on the octave C, it will be an octave D on the third string, seventh fret. The same two fret distance as the C to D we started with. Just one octave higher. You could also play this octave D on the second string, third fret. When playing the first or second scale inversions, I would play this D note. However, from the third inversion, it is more comfortable to play the D note on the third string, seventh fret. Our exercise has us playing a scale note, second interval, then back. It's played with the quarter, quarter, half note rhythm. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. If you would like to spend more time training your ear to recognize half steps and whole steps, please visit the bonus section of this video and return to this section once you've completed the half step and whole step ear training exercise. When we play a melody from C to E, we are playing a third interval. This can also be called a major third interval. The distance of this interval is two whole steps or four frets. When we move to the second scale note, the D note, and play the third scale note above it, we have an F note, which is only three frets distance. This is a minor third interval. Major and minor third intervals are very important emotional factors in music. Many people view the major third as having a bright or happy emotional quality and consider the minor third a soft, sad, or mellow emotional quality. Musicians refer to these intervals with different names. A distance of two whole steps or four frets can be called a third interval or a major third interval. A distance of one and a half steps or three frets can be called a flat third interval or a minor third interval. So in the C scale, C to E is a major third, D to F is a minor third, E to G is a minor third, F to A is major, G to B is major, A to C is a minor third, B to D is a minor third, and the octave C to the octave E is a major third. Now let's play our third intervals with a tempo. Thank you. 
playing thirds on the same string can be an uncomfortable stretch, especially the major third. This is where our scale inversions come in handy. For example, instead of playing C to E on the fifth string, we can substitute an alternative E note on the fourth string second fret. You can play D on the fifth string fifth fret and the minor third F on the fourth string third fret. Play E on the fourth string second fret to the open G on the third string. F on the fourth string third fret to A on the third string second fret. G the third string open to B the second string open. A on the third string second fret to C on the second string first fret. B on the third string fourth fret to D on the second string third fret. And C on the second string first fret to E open on the first string. Here's our alternative third interval fingerings with a tempo. In the key of C, we can use our scale to play fourth intervals starting with C to F, D to G, and E to A. These are all two and a half steps distance, or the equivalent of five frets. However, the distance from F to its fourth scale note B is one fret longer. This results in an augmented fourth interval which is three steps or six frets distance. The rest of the scale uses all fourth intervals, G to C, A to D, B to E, and octave C to an octave F. So for most of the scale, we have fourth intervals, which is also called a perfect fourth interval. exception of F, which uses an augmented fourth interval. And back to the fourth or perfect fourth for the remaining scale notes. Playing our scale with fifths, we have C and G, D and A, E and B, F and C, G and D, 
A and E, which are all three and a half steps or seven frets distance, making a fifth interval, which is also referred to as the perfect fifth interval. The seventh scale note, B, has a different distance to its fifth scale note. The distance from B to F is three steps or six frets distance. This is the same distance as an augmented fourth interval. However, B to F is five scale notes. So we call this a diminished fifth interval, also referred to as a flat fifth interval. We end our run on the octave C to G. The sixth interval, C to A, is four and a half steps or nine frets distance. Since it's a long stretch to play from C on the fifth string to A on the fourth string, let's shorten the stretch by playing the A note on the third string second fret. So we'll rearrange our fingers to hold C with the middle or second finger and use the index finger or first finger for the A note. Up two frets to D, and we can use the same fingering to play from D to B for a sixth interval. Or you can play the open D on the fourth string to the open B on the second string. The next note in our scale is E. E to C is a shorter distance of four steps, giving us a minor sixth interval. Up one fret to F, F to D returns to the sixth interval, which by the way can also be referred to as the major sixth interval. Up to G, G to E is a sixth or major sixth interval. A to F is a minor sixth or flat sixth interval. B to G is also a minor sixth or flat sixth interval. Let's run through them all. Starting on C, we have a major sixth, major sixth, minor sixth, major, major, minor, minor, and the octave C brings us back to a major sixth. Since we are using the C major scale, the seventh interval, C to B, is a major seventh interval. 
This is five and a half steps or 11 frets distance. As a rule, whenever you are naming this interval, you must include the word major because a seventh by itself, as we will learn, is a different interval. So C to B is a major seventh interval. When we move to the second scale note, the D note, and play the seventh scale note above it, C, the distance is only five steps or 10 frets. This is called a minor seventh interval, or simply a seventh interval. E to D is another minor seventh or seventh interval. F to E is a major seventh interval. G to F is a seventh interval. A to G is a seventh interval. And B to A is a seventh interval. Of course, when we reach our octave C, the interval produced is a major seventh. So for the different type of seventh intervals, we have the minor seventh, or simply the seventh, which is five steps or 10 frets. And we also have the major seventh, which is five and a half steps or 11 frets distance. Again, when you're naming this interval, you have to specify that it is a major seventh. Every note has an octave. They share the same name, but they are six steps distance or 12 frets on the guitar. The octave is exactly double the frequency or pitch of the starting note. Or if you're going down in pitch, the lower octave is exactly half the frequency or pitch of the starting note. So far, we have learned to play melody, which is when individual notes are played one after the other. Next, we will learn harmony, which is when two notes are played together at the same time. The same intervals that we have learned for melody can be applied to harmony. In fact, now we are going to take all of the intervals that we have learned and apply them to the C note. So now we will include all of the frets that we have been skipping. Since harmony requires the sounding of two different notes, the flat second harmony is difficult to achieve because you have to play the notes on two different strings, and they are quite a stretch away from each other. To demonstrate, I'll move up to the sixth string eighth fret but I'll play it with my pinky. 
and stretch my index finger to play the D flat on the fifth string fourth fret. When these notes are played together in harmony, they sound very dissonant or sour to the ear. As a melody, the flat second is the shortest of the intervals. The sound quality of just these two notes played in sequence has a minor feel or sound. Again, playing the notes together produces a very strong dissonance which can be defined as undesirable or unresolved. So let's move to our second harmony which combines the C and D notes together. This harmony isn't as harsh as the flat second, but it is still a little dissonant since the notes are only a whole step away from each other. As a melody, the second interval has a neutral quality, meaning it can be played with major or minor intervals. minor third harmony offers an emotional quality that many define as soothing, sad, or mellow. As a melody, the minor third has the same effect. The major third harmony is one of the most commonly used harmonies. It is often described as bright and happy sounding. perfect fourth is a neutral tone and can be played along with minor or major notes both as a harmony or a melody. The augmented fourth offers slight dissonance yet can be used to create urgency. For example, if you play the C scale but replace the fourth interval, F, with an augmented fourth, F sharp, you can increase the listener's anticipation. The same is true for the augmented fourth played as a harmony. The augmented fourth also shares the name diminished fifth. It is the same fingering, but it has two different names. An example of how you would choose which name to call this interval would depend on the other notes present in a scale or a piece of music that you are playing. For example, if you are playing the notes C, D, E, F, then the augmented fourth or diminished fifth interval, you would call this interval a diminished fifth since the natural Fourth, the F, is already present. If you're playing the notes C, D, E, F sharp, G, the interval would be called an augmented fourth because it is replacing the F note from our scale. A simple rule to remember is to avoid using a duplicate note or interval. Perfect fifth is another neutral interval which can be used in major or minor music. As a harmony, the fifth interval is often referred to as a power chord. The augmented fifth can be categorized as a suspenseful or unresolved interval. This interval also shares the name minor sixth as the harmony or melody. The major sixth produces a subtle sound allowing the listener to accept any other major interval.
The seventh interval offers a soft dissonance, but does not present the listener for an immediate need for resolution. This gives the music the option to build upon its melody or harmony before resolving on a consonant note like a root note. The major seventh interval is referred to as the leading tone. It is the furthest interval from the root and is the closest to the next octave. The major seventh strong dissonance as a melody or harmony lead the listener to expect a resolution. Any dissonant interval can be resolved by any consonant tone. The octave brings us back to the root. An octave can be double or half the frequency or pitch of any given note. Let's run through these intervals with a tempo. We will skip the flat second interval and start with the second. Here we will harmonize each scale note, which means we will only be using scale notes for these exercises. Since the second harmonies require an uncomfortable stretch, we will skip them and begin with thirds. Applied to our C scale, which is the same as saying we are playing in the key of C, the first third harmony is major. The second, D, produces a minor third. E is a minor third, F is a major third, G is major, A to C is minor, the B third is minor, and back to C. The note value for this exercise combines our quarter, quarter, half note rhythm. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. As with our melody, the C scale harmonized to fourths includes an augmented fourth when we reach the F note. All of the other scale notes harmonize to a perfect fourth. The note value combines a half note, quarter note, quarter note for a new rhythm. One, 
two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Here we will harmonize our scale into fifths. Remember the seventh scale tone, B, produces a diminished fifth interval. For the six harmonies, we are introducing a new note value. We've used whole notes equaling four beats each, half notes are two beats each, and quarter notes are one beat each. Now we will introduce eighth notes, which split a beat into half a pulse. So instead of counting each measure, one, two, three, four, we will now add the word and in between each count. One and, two and, three and, four and. Starting with C, we have a major sixth. One and two and three and four and. Then from D, we have a major sixth. One and two and three and four and. E is a minor sixth. F is major. G is major. A is minor, B is minor, and the octave C brings us up to a major sixth. That was technically a melody since we never played the two notes together at the same time. Here is a similar exercise which combines sixth melodies and harmonies. For each measure, we'll start out playing the harmony for a half note duration. One, two. 
On the three count, we play the root or starting note for an eighth note duration. On the and count, we play the sixth harmony for an eighth note duration. And on the four count, we play the root again for a quarter note duration. Altogether, the rhythm is half, eighth, eighth, quarter. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Now we will apply seventh harmonies to our scale, but with an entirely new note value called a rest. A rest produces a duration of silence in music. For each note value, there is also a rest. The whole note and the whole rest, the half note and the half rest, the quarter note, quarter rest, eighth note, and eighth rest. Here, we will combine half notes with half rests, playing the seventh harmony for the one count Hold for two, then silence the guitar for counts three and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Here is a similar exercise playing seventh harmonies with three quarter notes followed by a quarter rest. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, rest. One, two, three, rest. For the octave harmony, we will alternate between eighth notes and eighth rests. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and...
Visit the bonus section of this video for melody and harmony ear training exercise. A triad is a group of three notes played together. A chord is a group of three or more notes played together. So it is with triads that we begin our study of chords. A chord is made up of the first, third, and fifth interval. In the key of C, the notes C, E, and G make up a C chord. The third interval gives each chord its major or minor quality. So since C to E is a major third interval, the C chord is a major chord. You can call this chord C or elaborate and call it C major. You can also choose to invert the chord by starting with a different chord note in different positions on the same string. For example, our first inversion of the C chord we have already learned, using the C note on the 5th string, 3rd fret, E on the 4th string, 2nd fret, and G open. The next inversion is found by moving up to the next chord note on the 5th string, which is E on the 7th fret, and playing it along with G on the 4th string, 5th fret, and C on the 3rd string, 5th fret. And the 3rd inversion would start on G on the 5th string, 10th fret, played along with C on the 4th string, 10th fret, and E on the 3rd string, 9th fret. For the remainder of the chords, I will just go over the first inversion based on the root, third, and fifth intervals. But once you have had a chance to experiment with them, make use of the fretboard note chart located in the bonus stills section of this video to find different extensions and variations. To build the second chord in the key of C, start with the second scale note, D. When we apply the 135 formula, D is our first. F is the third, and A is the fifth. Since F is a minor third distance from D, one and a half steps, our second chord in the key of C is D minor. To build the third chord in the key of C, start with E, and when we apply the 135 formula, E is our one, or chord root note, G is the third, and B is the fifth. G is a minor third, or one and a half steps from E, so our third chord in the key of C is E minor. The fourth note in the C scale is F. Applied to the 135 chord formula, we have the notes F, A, and C. A is a major third, or two steps distance from F, so our fourth chord in the key of C is F major. The fifth note in the key of C is G, and when we apply the notes 1, 3, 5, or G, B, D, we have a G major chord because B is a major third. A is the sixth note in the key of C. The 1, 3, 5 formula gives us A, C, and E. C is a minor third above A, so the sixth chord in the key of C is A minor. The seventh note in the key of C is B. The 1, 3, 5 formula applied to a seventh major scale note gives us an entirely different chord called a diminished chord. Here we have the notes B, D, and F. D is a minor third above B, and F is a flat fifth or diminished fifth interval. 
So if we want to stay within our scale or within the key of C, our seventh chord will be a B diminished. Altogether, the C scale harmonized as chords is C, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor, B diminished, and C again. Musicians often use numbers in place of chord names when introducing a song to band members. For example, the chords of a song might be introduced as 145 or 1645. As we have learned, each note in a scale has a numeric value or an interval. C is 1, D is 2, E is the 3rd, F is the 4th, G the 5th, A is the 6th, B is the 7th, and C is the 8th or first note again. When a scale has been harmonized into chords, each chord is often referred to with the same number, but written with Roman numerals. Minor chords may also use lowercase Roman numerals. Earlier, we learned three inversions for our C scale along with three inversions for our C triad, or chord. There are also different chord variations. With the C chord, we have the notes C, E, and G. Any combination of these notes in any order will still produce a C chord. For example, if we look at a fretboard note chart, we see there are several options for playing a C chord in any given position. Because of this, the most common way to play a C chord on the guitar is with the C on the 5th string 3rd fret, E on the 4th string 2nd fret, G the 3rd string open, another C on the 2nd string 1st fret, and another E on the 1st string open. Also, it does not matter what order you play the chord tones in. You can mix them up, and as long as the notes C, E, and G are present, you will have a C chord. So you can add the low E note on the 6th string. Since G is a part of the C chord, you could add the high G note on the 1st string 3rd fret. Or add it to the 6th string 3rd fret. Some people choose to write this type of chord as a C slash G chord. When you see a slash symbol in a chord box, the first letter is the name of the chord, and the second letter is the lowest note of the chord. If the guitar note is a part of the chord formula, it is not necessary to write it as a slash chord. The option is entirely up to you. Here are the most common guitar forms for each chord. If you'd like to explore more options for each chord, like we just did with the C chord, visit the stills section of this video and view the fretboard note chart. The second chord in our key is D minor. The most common way to play this chord on a guitar is with the first string first fret F note, second string third fret D note, third string second fret A note, and fourth string open, which is a D. The third chord, E minor, uses the first string open, second string open, and the third string open. The notes are E, B, and G. The fourth string second fret is E, fifth string second fret is B, and the sixth string open is E. The fourth chord in the key of C is F and is often considered the hardest basic chord to play because it requires that you bar your first finger across the first fret of all six strings. To play this chord, include the first string first fret F note, second string first fret C note, third string second fret A, fourth string third fret F, fifth string third fret C, and the sixth string first fret F. Since bar chords require a lot of finger strength, I teach students different variations based on their skill level. For the first F chord variation, 
Simply play the basic F triad with F on the fourth string third fret, A on the third string second fret, and C on the second string first fret. You can enhance this chord by adding the first string first fret by barring the first finger across the first and second string. Once you get the hang of that, you can move the third finger to the fifth string third fret C note, then replace the fourth string third fret F note with your fourth finger. When you can play this easily, you are ready to graduate to a full bar chord. All of the fingering stays the same, but you are now adding the sixth string first fret F note with the finger bar. The G chord is the fifth chord in the key of C. It is formed by playing the first string third fret G, second string open is B, third string open is G, fourth string open is D. The fifth string second fret is a B note, and the sixth string third fret is G. The sixth chord, A minor, uses the first string open E, second string first fret C, third string second fret A, fourth string second fret E, and the fifth string open A. The seventh chord, B diminished, uses the second string third fret D, third string fourth fret B, fourth string third fret F, and the fifth string second fret B. Our seven scale notes, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, are now harmonized to common guitar chords. C, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor, B diminished, and back to C. These common chords are often called open chords since they are located in the open position of the guitar neck. For an example of using scale notes as numbers, let's play a 1-4-5-4 chord progression. Translated to our key, the 1 chord is C, the 4 chord is F, the 5 chord is G, then back to the 4 chord F. For a more in-depth look at guitar chords, check out Easy Guitar Chords DVD and Guitar Probable Chords. When eighth notes are bracketed into groups of three, the note value is called a triplet. This divides each count into three pulses. We learn that a quarter note equals one beat and are counted one, two, three, four. Next, we learn that eighth notes divide each beat into two pulses and are counted one and, two and, three and, four and. Triplets divide each count into three pulses and are counted one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a. Here is an exercise using triplets to play each note of our chords individually. This is called an arpeggio. One and a, two and a, three and a, four and a, one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a.
Sixteenth notes divide each beat into four pulses. To do this, we are now going to count each beat as one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Here is another arpeggio exercise. When someone refers to the key of C, they are referring to the natural scale or the C major or Ionian scale. When someone refers to the key of A, they are referring to the key of A major Ionian scale, unless they specify A minor, A Dorian, A Phrygian, etc. The distance between notes can be measured by whole steps and half steps. A whole step is equal to two frets on the guitar. A half step is equal to one fret. When you want to change the key of a scale or a song, just apply the same pattern of whole steps and half steps to the key you wish to play in. So for example, the key of C, if we move that up two whole frets, the same exact pattern, we're now playing in D. If we back that up from C, two frets, we're now playing in B flat. You go one fret and you're playing in A. So that's all there's to it when changing keys. As I mentioned before, a half step is one fret. A whole step is two frets. Now the formula for a major scale from the root is a whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, and half step. Again, it's whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. So any major scale, regardless of what key it is in, key of A, key of B, key of C, key of D, will apply to this whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step formula. When we change keys, we are adding sharp and flat notes. Instead of writing a sharp or flat symbol in front of each altered note, we can use a sharp or flat in the key signature to specify which scale to use. For example, one sharp note in the key signature tells us that the music is in the key of G because the G scale only uses one sharp. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. A key signature with two sharp notes indicates the key of D, which uses the notes D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. The key of A uses three sharps. The key of E uses four sharps. For your benefit, the following sections teach you to play melody, harmony, and triads in every key of music. Although we have already learned the key of C, I will still include it here so you can use this section to practice playing in all keys of music. Thank you.
An image called the circle of fifths has been used for ages to help musicians remember the names of each key signature. The top center of the circle of fifths represents the key of C, which uses no sharps or flats in the key signature. This location on the circle of fifths can be considered the zero position. As we move clockwise from the zero or C position, each position will represent a note one perfect fifth interval up in pitch, and that position will tell you how many sharp notes are in its key signature. So from C in the zero position, the next space will represent the G note, or the key of G, which uses one sharp in the key signature. A perfect fifth up from G is a D note, which uses two sharps in the key signature. A perfect fifth from D is A, which uses three sharps in the key signature. Up another fifth, we have the key of E using four sharps. A fifth up and we have the key of B using five sharps. The next fifth interval brings us to F sharp with six sharps in the key signature. And the next fifth interval brings us to C sharp, a key that uses seven sharp notes. There are seven sharp key signatures and seven flat key signatures. Let's back up to the B spot on the circle of fifths. Starting at this location, there is an enharmonic key that shares the same tones of the key of B, but they all have different names. This enharmonic key is called the key of C flat. Technically, there is no C flat note in the musical alphabet because there are no sharp or flat notes between B and C. However, in rare cases, there are instances where the writer does in fact need to consider the key as C flat instead of B. In which case, the key signature will use seven flat notes. In the circle of fifths, the flat keys are written inside the circle, and any enharmonic keys will line up as with the case of the key of B and the key of C flat. From C flat, if we move up a fifth, we will reach the G flat note. For the flat keys, we will count down in our key signature, so the key of G flat uses six flat notes. Up another fifth, and we are at the key of D flat using five flat notes in the key signature. A fifth up, and we have the key of A flat with four flat notes. Up a fifth to E flat with three flat notes in the key signature. Another fifth brings us to B flat with two flat notes in the key signature. From B flat, up a fifth in pitch brings us to F, which uses one flat in the key signature. And finally, F brings us back to the key of C which completes the circle of fifths. Now that we have learned to play in each musical key, let's go over some advanced theory. We know a chord is made up of three or more notes. The formula for a triad is to use the first, third, and fifth interval. The next chord extension above a triad is to build a seventh chord consisting of the first, third, fifth, and seventh interval. In the key of C, the one or C chord would build a major seventh chord because the B note is a major seventh distance from the C. One, three, five, seven, or C, E, G, B. The two chord in the key of C will build a D minor seven when we combine the one, three, five, seven intervals, D, F, A, and C. When we rearrange these notes into a more comfortable position, we can play all four chord notes at the same time. Here I'm playing D, the root open on the fourth string, A, our fifth interval, C, the seventh interval, and F, our minor third. The three chord also produces a minor seven. The E minor seven is made up of the notes E, G, B, D. The four chord will build an F major seven, F, A, C, E. The five chord is a major chord, G, but the seventh is F, 
the same distance as a minor seventh interval. Since G is not a minor chord, when we add the F note, the V chord in any key will be called a dominant seventh chord, or you could simply call this a seventh chord, as in G7. The sixth chord is A minor seven, A, C, E, G. The seventh chord is a B diminished chord. When we add the seventh interval, A, the B diminished chord becomes B minor seven flat five. So far, we have learned intervals starting with the root up to its octave. There are also compound intervals that allow you to count higher than seven. For example, the octave of the root can be called the eighth interval in addition to the first interval. We know that D is the second interval. However, it can also be considered the ninth as well. The reason for using ninth intervals is to build a five note chord beyond seventh chords. When we combine the one, three, five, seven, nine intervals, we now have ninth chords. In the key of C, the one chord made up of C, E, G, B, D will create a C major nine chord. The two chord will be a D minor nine. D, F, A, C, E. The three chord is a little different. If you recall, for our introduction to intervals, the distance between E and F is a half step. So when we use compound intervals to build extended chords, the distance between E and the second, F, is a flat nine interval. Therefore, when we harmonize the third chord, as the ninth chord, we end up with an E minor seven flat nine chord. E, G, B, D, F. In theory, this chord is often altered from the scale by raising the F note to an F sharp and is played as an E minor nine chord. The four chord builds an F major nine, F, A, C, E, G. The V chord is a G9, G, B, D, F, A. The VI chord is an A minor 9, A, C, E, G, B. And the seventh chord is a B minor 7, flat 9, flat 5, B, D, F, A, C. In theory, the seventh chord is often altered, raising the flat nine, C, to a major ninth interval, C sharp. The new chord becomes a B minor nine, flat five chord. There are no tenth or twelfth chords in music theory. Since the basic foundation of a chord is the one, three, five intervals, when you compound intervals, these notes are already present. E is our third, so in the compound intervals, E would also be a tenth. G is our fifth, and in compound, it would be the same as the twelfth. To use scale notes to build the C eleventh chord, we would create the C major eleven, consisting of C, E, G, B, D, and F. This chord is often altered by raising the eleventh interval, or F note, to a sharp eleven, or F sharp note. The resulting chord is a C major 9, sharp 11. The 2 chord, D, will build a D minor 11th chord, D, F, A, C, E, and G. The 3 chord is an E minor 11, flat 9, when we stick to the scale, consisting of E, G, B, D, F, and A. It is often altered to an E minor 11 by raising the 9th to an F sharp. E, G, B, D, F sharp, A. The four chord creates an F major nine, sharp 11. F, A, C, E, G, B. The five chord is a G 11th, G, B, D, F, A, C. It is often altered to a G nine, sharp 11. 
G, B, D, F, A, C sharp. The sixth chord is an A minor 11th. A, C, E, G, B, D. The seventh chord creates a B minor 11, flat 9, flat 5, consisting of B, D, F, A, C, E. This chord is often altered to a B minor 11, flat 5, B, D, F, A, C sharp, E. For guitar music, 13th chords usually do not include the 11th interval. When it does, the chord name must list the type of 11th interval used. For example, if the one chord included a sharp 11th interval, you would call the chord C major 13, sharp 11. If the 11th interval is not specified, as in C major 13, you will omit the 11th interval. So our one chord would be C major 13, consisting of C, E, G, B, D, and A, skipping the F or 11th interval. When a chord is lacking a third interval, it is considered a suspended chord. The lack of a third interval creates a neutral feel to the chord because it is not major or minor. A suspended second chord, or 5 add 2 chord, uses the 1, 2, and 5 intervals. Applied to C, this is C, D, and G. The combined intervals 1, 4, and 5 make a suspended 4 chord, or a sus 4 chord. Applied to C, this is C, F, and G. You can also suspend 7th through 13th chords by simply eliminating the third interval and replacing it with a fourth. By taking an existing triad and adding a second interval, you are creating a 2 or add 2 chord. The C2 chord would consist of C, D, E, and G. A triad plus a 6 interval will make a 6 chord. For example, C6 is C, E, G, and A. By playing a 6 chord and adding the 2nd or 9th interval, the chord becomes 6 slash 9. To be a 6 slash 9 chord, the 7th interval cannot be present. C 6 slash 9 would be C, D, E, G, and A. We've learned note values up to 16th notes. The next value above 16th notes is a 32nd note. Many people find it easiest to use the same count as they would for 16th notes but play two notes for each pulse counted. For example, playing 16th notes, you would count 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a, 4 E and a. When playing 32nd notes, keep the same count, but play two notes each time you count. Another method is to count each pulse as you play it. 1 E and a, and a, and a, 2 E and a, and a, and a, or, 1 counting 30 second notes, 2 counting 30 second notes. Generally, you would practice this very slow, and once you have the hang of it, you would play the piece at normal speed without counting anything above 16th notes. For your reference, there are note values above 30 second notes, such as the 64th note.